A handful of aircraft in DCS feature countermeasure release programs. Rather than pressing a specific button to drop flares or chaff, you set up a sequence to drop countermeasures. These include the Harrier, Hornet, A10C, and Mirage. In some respects, it's actually easier on aircraft that have just a single button to drop chaff or flares. This mostly comes from a lack of understanding, however, of the systems, as they have a relative nuisance to programming them and you may not know what you're going to get when you press the button if you're not familiar with them. However, if you need to drop, say, 8 flares in quick succession, it is far easier to press the button once than it is to hurriedly hit the flare release button many times. Especially since this is going to be a very time sensitive situation with a missile that's all too eager to give you a hug. Normally, you'll have to reprogram your design countermeasures release programs each time you step into the cockpit. Or, you simply have to remember the default programs and what they do. This can be an issue if you do not like the defaults, and is particularly annoying in the Hornet, as the countermeasure system will not fully power up until weight is off your wheels. Anyone who has spent some time in Falcon BMS will be familiar with the data cartridge menu found on the planning map. It allows you to customise your aircraft configuration prior to a mission, meaning you can save your countermeasure programs, waypoints, radio channels and settings in general, instead of having to re-enter them for each mission, like we do in DCS. Whilst this feature is sorely missing in DCS, there are some configuration files that you can change that allow you to save your custom countermeasure programs, although they're not all well documented within DCS. They're located within the main DCS folder, I've got their locations and file names on screen now. This will require a little bit of Lua file editing with Notepad, nothing to be scared of however, just changing some numbers, much the same as you would within the aircraft itself, it's just done with Notepad. So, let's get started. The easiest way to do this is to go to your DCS shortcut, right click it, go to properties, select shortcut, open file location. This will now open up your folder for your DCS, in this case we're in the bin folder, so we'll navigate back to the DCS world folder. If you are using Steam, the process is pretty similar, just select your game, right click it, properties, local files, browse local files. From here, the process is the same whether you're using the Steam version or the standalone. So now we're in the root folder of DCS, we'll go to the mods folder, aircraft, and in this example I'll use the FA-18. Go to cockpit, scripts, TEWS, device, and here you can see the file which we will be editing. Inside we've got our various countermeasure program presets. These include the auto presets. You should not modify these generally speaking as these are what the automatic response systems use which if you change their function it could mess up the system and give the wrong response. Before we edit anything we need to make some backups just to be safe so I will create a new folder we'll call it DCS CMS open that, we'll now create a folder for our Hornet and inside here we'll create a folder for our backup files so we'll copy across the profile. In addition, because these files get overwritten each time we have an update to DCS, and so we get set back to their defaults, you'll need to access this folder every single time an update is installed. So for convenience, I like to create a copy of the folder and place a shortcut to it so I can easily access the folder and replace the files whenever there is an update. Now we've done that, we shall create an extra copy of the profile paste it in and now we can make modifications to this file for how we want it to use. So now we have our programs, let's make some changes. Personally I like to use manual 1 for chaff, so we'll set a program of 1, we'll remove the flares, set an interval of 3 and we will cycle it 3 times, so every 3 seconds we'll drop 1 chaff. And that will happen until we drop 3 in total. Next up for manual 2, I'd like to set up a program for a 
preemptive defense with flares. So this means I'll be dropping chaff or flares, in this case flares, for about, say, 30 seconds whilst I'm doing an attack. So we'll take the chaff off, have the flares on, we'll set an interval of... Actually, no, let's have two flares. We'll set an interval of three seconds and we'll repeat ten times. So every three seconds we'll drop two flares, every duration of 30 seconds in total. And now for program 5, I will tend to set this up as a profile for flares, specifically in a kind of reactive fashion, not a uh, panic button as such, but something for when I expect threats, but I don't want to use the full profile that'll spend 30 seconds dropping flares. So I'll set a flare drop of 2, don't need an interval, and we'll just have a cycle of 1. So now we'll drop two flares for each button press. We might also want to rename these to ref reflect what they do, but this has no effect on the game. This is merely for your own reference. Beneath that we have Man 6, which is the wall panic dispense button. This is a slap switch, effectively, which you hammer in a panic. I personally like to have this set up to be a dump of flares very rapidly, designed to defeat a missile and uh, hopefully save my life in a moment of crisis. So what I tend to do is have one flare, 0.1 delay and I want to cycle eight times. So this will drop eight flares very rapidly, hopefully defeating a missile that is chasing me. Once we're done with these I will then save. It is a good idea to put a reference at the top. You can see here we've got two dashes, this means it is commented out the program will not read these lines. So I like to add in a line that states this file has been edited just so I know it's my file and not the uh, default one. Once we've done that, we'll copy and paste the file and overwrite it. So now our custom profiles have been saved into the DCS and now when you launch the aircraft you will have these settings set up for you immediately. Like I mentioned before, every time DCS does an update, this file will be re reset back to default and you will have to go in, copy your file, follow your shortcut and paste. This will not upset the IC integrity check in multiplayer, so you do not need to worry about that. This is a file that is designed to be configured. This applies to all the aircraft, so what I recommend you do is you create one folder for each aircraft. So we'll create one for the Mirage, and then I'd repeat the process and store the files inside here. That's pretty much all there is to it. Keep this folder somewhere safe for easy access so you can place them later and you'll be good to go. If you've been keeping an eye on the Hornet Mini Updates thread on the Egon Dynamics forum, you'll know that the ability to modify the data cartridge settings from within the game itself is coming for the Hornet at some point in the future, so we've got that to look forward to. With a bit of luck, the other developers and modules will follow suit and we'll see this process be a lot easier for all our modules, but for the meantime this is the only way to set it up before you step in the cockpit. There are programs out there that'll do this for you, or make it easier, but honestly it's such a simple process you don't need them. I hope you found this useful and take care.